But let's take a look at some of these other some of these other modeling tools. Oh, that's a good question. Um, in order to do that, I'm actually not sure that you can. Um, I think if you try to join these geometries, it's not going to. It's not going to allow that. It's not going to like that. You could. So you know what, I take that back. There is there is something you could do if you wanted to, to fix these elements together. If you picked your countertop and your cabinets, now that you've got them all lined up and figure out the way you want, if you did create group, you could kind of lock them together so that if you decided to put that in another corner, you could do that. And you could call this um, kitchen cabinets. All right, so the next tool I want to look at is also one of our components. So if you choose component, model in place. Um, let's put this one under, let's see. Um, so for this, let's just do generic models. It's fine for this. And let's call this a blend. And again, over here in our, our uh, solids, choose the second one down from extrusion, blend. And so over here you can see that this kind of gives you a good, good idea of what the blend tool does. If you just hover over the tool, you're taking two shapes. So in this case, the example is like a plus shape and something with curved ends. And you specify the base and you specify the top and then Revit will merge those two together. So you've got your top side. And so for the top, let's just do let's do a square. And then for the base, let's try maybe an octagon. So if you choose this um, inscribed polygon tool, it asks you how many sides you want on that. So pick eight, or you can do something of your own as well. That's fine. And let's do something like that. So over here on the blend properties, again, just like in extrusion, we had our start end and our finish end. We've got our first end and our second end. And I think the first end is the base and the second end is the top. And I'll just check that to make sure. <coughs> but let's leave the first end at the bottom and let's say the second end is um, maybe 10 feet. Click the check mark, the finish blend. Oh, that actually is not what I thought. It seemed like the first and second would be the base and the top, but this is this is a little bit inverted. So let's You know what it's it's fine for now. Let's just let's just leave what we've got, but be mindful of the fact that um, it might not be as simple as it seems when you're creating an extrusion. Um, but again, notice that if you chose element properties, and say you wanted this to be brick or something like that, and you just pick on element properties, your materials are, are available to you now because we're still in the model. We're still in our model in place. If you see one of those green paths, 
it's a reminder that you're still in the modeling space. So, let's choose the material. And instead of whatever generic material it gave it, let's go into masonry and maybe choose something like brick. Click OK. This is actually a tool I, or something that I realized in the last class, that if you select an object and then rotate, it'll rotate around that object. Rather than by not doing that, it just sort of rotates around anything. You can sort of check out the geometry that you just created if you select it. And then if you hold down the, the wheel on your mouse, select, shift and the wheel of your mouse, you'll be able to sort of spin around it and take a look at what you just created with that blend tool. And again, if you're not being precise, you can you can use this. Yeah? Um, how do you get the wheel that I Why do you I'm not exactly sure about that. Let me let me finish this and let's try it again. Let's do it in the reverse order as we did last time. <coughs> so you can go to Component, Model in Place. That's fine. Do our blend. So it's interesting. It seems like this wants to that we're first doing the top, but I'm going to reverse that order and, and try it the other way this time. Do the octagon first. And then when you're done with one, by clicking on this button again, it's asking us to edit the base. Is that helpful? So again, I'm going to make this one brick. And again, if you select that and then shift and the wheel of your mouse, you can sort of spin around it and get a sense of the geometry that that tool helped you make. Yeah? I'm not getting the... Uh, yeah. Alright, so we've got this sort of massive um, massive block created. Uh, let's see Let's see what we can do with the void tools. So we're still in this model. And we know that because the, the model in place is still highlighted, the green tab. This time go over to void and just select this, uh, this extrusion right here. And what I'm going to do is take the line tool and I'm just going to come in a little bit. So that's our footprint for a void. <coughs> and for extrusion properties, I'm going to say say start at zero, end at three feet. I'm going to finish that, and then finish the model. You can see that it. 
that out. It's like maybe this is some sort of, you know, crazy gouty fireplace or something like that. You know, again, don't build too constricted by the elements available to you in the Revit model. Use some of these tools to come up with things that are a bit more unique and a little bit more, um, you know, allow you to be a little bit more expressive in what you design. So let's do a couple more. Um, again, component, model in place. Uh, let's put this one on furniture, just for kicks. Let's call this a revolve. So again, with solid, the third one down is called revolve. Let's pick that. You know, let's do this in our level one floor plan. Let's let's work the geometry out in our level one floor plan so we can be a little precise. But if you look here, here we're basically going to be drawing boundary lines, so sketching some kind of footprint, and then an axis about which we're going to rotate. So, for example, if I for the boundary lines, and you can do whatever here. You don't have to. You don't have to match what I'm doing. Let's say that's some sort of footprint, a boundary. Now we want to fix this tool right below it to define our axis about which we're going to rotate this geometry. So if I did my axis right here, and you spun this around, it would be solid at the top or the bottom, depending on how you're looking at that. But let's say you took that axis, moved it over there, and you finish your revolve. You might have something like that. I'm just going to hide some of those so it's a little bit clearer what we've got here. I'm going to turn my floor off as well so we can see the whole thing. So there's what we've created. Notice that we spun it 360 degrees around that axis, but if we wanted to, remember, if you pick that model and choose element properties, what you have to modify is actually fairly limited. To really begin to edit the parameters of that of that shape that you just created, cancel out of that, and edit in place the model. So now, again, you're in your model environment. You're sort of nested into that model, model environment. You've got the green tab in place. Select it. Choose element properties. You can see the top two things we have here are the start and end angle. So it's basically the how many degrees of that rotation you're actually rotating that, that footprint. Again, you also can change the material in this area. Um, but let's just say, instead of starting at 0 and going to 360, we started at 180 and went to 360. What would that look like? So there you're just seeing half of that geometry that you create. Any questions on this? All right, everybody with me? Yeah, cool. Again, we're going to finish this model, and we're going to move on to our next our next component modeling tool. So once again, component, go down to model in place. Well, let's also put this on furniture. It's fine. And the fourth, the fourth one down is called a sweep. So let's pick on that, and you can see from you know, these these little pop-ups are pretty good at giving you some sort of sense of what you're getting yourself into when you choose this tool. What it's showing here is these purple lines are showing a, a profile. 
some sort of uh, shape that you either pick or define on your own, draw on your own, and then some sort of path that you're drawing that through. So you're taking some sort of geometry, and then you're just sort of sliding it around some sort of uh, path that you pick or specify. Any ideas about what something like this might be useful for in the built environment? What sort of things do you see that might, might do that? No. Okay, tubing or wiring. What about like in um, like sort of um, like in a like an old building that you can think of that might sort of um, yeah, like trims or molding or things like that. You know, it's a good sort of uh, way to utilize this tool. But pretty much anything where you've got some sort of geometry sort of wrapping. Uh, you can also, you know, we're using this for solids to start with, but for a void, you could create sort of a reveal. You know, sometimes you'll have a wall that's got sort of a gap in it. You could create the wall the way you needed to, but then use um, use the void to sort of um, to cut into it. But for right now, let's go ahead and choose our sweep. And for starters, so our options up here are to sketch the path or pick the path. And just to get going, let's let's make it easy and let's just pick something. And let's pick this outer edge of this revolved form that we just created. Let's go ahead and pick that. And look what happened. The, the line that we picked is purple now. That's the path that we're going to choose. And then it's up this sort of, what do you think that's it? Looks kind of familiar to some things you've probably seen before in modeling. It's sort of green dash with a crosshair. And it kind of looks like a reference plane, right? When, you, when you're picking a reference plane to draw on, it's really asking you, OK, so if I'm if I'm this plane on this path, what kind of shape do you want me to be? And so we, we finish our path. We're good there. And then our next, what it's asking for next, is to edit the profile. Or it gives us the option of loading a profile within Revit. You know, there's, there's lots of profiles you can use either externally or within this model. You know, there are all these things. So things like gutter, another good um, thing to use this on, or a parapet cap or a fascia. So these are things that you can use, but let's, for right now, let's just make our own. So again, it sort of gives you this, gives you this crosshair. If you need to be really precise, you could pick some sort of elevation view that Well, that's not the one I want. I want to be looking either east or west so that I'm facing that plane. So there we go. It's asking us to, uh, you know, that, that point is the path that it's going to be drawn through. And so we can sketch something. So I'm just going to just going to do something like that. I'm going to finish that profile. Go back to my 3D view so we can see it. There's the profile I created. And if you do finish sweep, it's going to take that and it's going to sweep it across the path that we specified. So I'm going to go ahead and finish that. And I'm going to do another, instead of picking the path, this time I'm just going to choose my own. I'm going to draw it myself. So once again, model in place. Again, solid. Put under your sweep tool. And instead of pick path, I'm going to choose the sketch path. So, You don't have to follow exactly what I'm doing. You're welcome to do whatever whatever you're interested in playing around with. That's good enough. So again, there's my path. Finished path. And the next thing it's going to ask us to do is look at our profile. And just to do something kind of standard, I'm going to take a look at what some of these 
these might be. So I'm going to look at the um, no, just a circular handrail. You do finish sweep. It took that profile you made and it carried it through the path that you specified. Finish the model and you're good to go. All right, so the very last one we're actually not going to do, just in the interest of time, make sure you guys get a break and we have time to cover stairs and such. But the last one can be pretty easily explained um, based on what we've looked at so far. But this third tool down, the swept blend, is just what it sounds like. We talked about what a, what a blend is. You're taking one shape on one end and one shape with the other. And rather than finding a way to merge those two together to a specified distance. And then for the sweep, and for the, uh, for the sweep we just take a profile and we carry that through a distance. And the sweep blend is just what it sounds like. It's merging those two together. So on one side, you're picking one shape. Another, you're picking another. And then you're specifying the path through which those those two are essentially merging um, to be carried over. Now you can get in some really creative geometries with this tool. Um, a lot of stuff that you see for like, um, like uh, Frank Gehry, you know, these crazy twisting forms. Uh, you can generate a lot of those shapes uh, with a tool like this where you're uh, allowing sort of fluid motion to happen based on the geometry that you're setting up. But with that, uh, let's take five minutes um, and we'll wrap up with stairs in the second part.